as we are studying resonance in organic chemistry that what actually the resonance is so this is a structure structure a it cannot be represented by a single Lewis structure okay and the B structure this can be represented very easily by a single Lewis structure now to understand the reactivity of this structure or, or this molecule as uh, I mentioned earlier that this is not a true alkene uh, neither it is a true alkene nor it is a true amine so to understand the behavior and the reactivity of this molecule we need to study the resonance because resonance will just tell us that uh, how it will react in a chemical reaction so this is the main function of resonance so before this we need to study some other concepts which will help us to understand the resonance and uh, ultimately we will be able to understand the reactivity of mo molecules like these which cannot be represented by a single Lewis structure so the first thing is electronegativity what actually is electronegativity electronegativity it is the measure of the strength of uh, an atom that how much it attracts a uh, bonding electron towards itself it uh, uh, it will be clear uh, with this example suppose we have a molecule like this hydrogen and hydrogen this is hydrogen molecule suppose now as both are same atoms so it is uh, uh, very it is very simple molecule and both atoms are same they have the same number of protons and the same nature so the bonding electron in the covalent bond will be shared shared right in its mid this is almost the mid so they have the same electronegativity okay now let's move to another atom molecule sorry H E H B R now what happened what happened here the electrons which are a part of the covalent bond it will be a little bit more near to the bromine because the bromine attracts those electrons more than the hydrogen so I should write it a little bit this is suppose the center I should write it like here okay now let's move to another molecule HF hydrogen fluoride H and F suppose this is the center and I am a little bit exaggerating that uh, electrons are too much near to the fluorine. So the electrons are very much near to fluorine. So according to the definition, this in this hydrogen molecule, the electrons are shared right in between in the middle. So you cannot say anything in this HBr molecule as you see. Or as you look toward it towards it the electrons are a little bit more near to bromine and in HF molecule I have uh, um, a little bit uh, um, uh, exaggerated or I have just more pushed the electron toward the fluorine just to make you understand but it is in fact a little bit more near to the fluorine molecule uh, atom to the fluorine atom in this molecule so uh, when we apply the definition of the uh, electronegativity so it makes the bromine more, uh, more electronegative than hydrogen and fluorine more electronegative than hydrogen but if we compare those two molecules HBr and HF the fluorine is more electronegative than bromine because both have H okay so uh, now we can understand that what electronegativity is okay but this electronegativity 
change uh, this ne uh, this electronegativity has uh, an effect on the molecule so what is that effect it makes this part a little bit uh, uh, partially uh, uh, negative and this part partially positive again this part a uh, little uh, partial positive and this part uh, partial negative but how and compare uh, and uh, in comparison to what i mean to say that h in hbr molecule the h is partially positive the bromine is partially negative in hf molecule the hydrogen is partially positive and the fluorine molecule is partially negative so let me clean this and write it in a little bit cleaner way this is HBr molecule okay and this is H F molecule so they write partial negative this part uh, they say that this is partially negative and this is partially positive this is partially positive and this is partially negative but in science you have to compare uh, every each thing with something else that how can we say that this is a little bit negative and what's what tells us and comparing it to what okay let's move to this molecule why hydrogen uh, uh, is partial positive or if we compare this hydrogen so we to what thing we should compare this hydrogen okay so let's uh, write this in this molecule suppose this is hydrogen molecule as you see that the electrons are shared right in the middle okay so both have the same effect. both are feeling the same effect okay but as you see here in this molecule what happens the hydro the electrons are a little bit near the bromine molecule so the hydrogen becomes a little bit partially positive means that if the bonding electrons are a little bit more away from it okay but what about bromine why it is negative let's compare it to something so what is that something br molecule bromine and bromine this molecule as you see that both the electron in bromine molecules are present right in the mid and you say that both of them both of them uh, feel the same the same effect or as you can say in in, uh, in in other words let me put it in in other words that they the electron are equidistant the bonding electron are equidistant from both the bromine nuclei but here they are near to the bromine nuclei and are away from the uh, uh, hydrogen nuclei so this bromine if we consider it a little bit uh, uh, if we consider it suppose neutral or zero and uh, now what about this the electron are a little bit more near than in bromine molecule so it is not zero it is a little bit more negative than this bromine and the same is the case with the hydrogen in hydrogen suppose both the hydrogens are zero zero from zero i mean that they are equidistant from the bonding electrons and now the hydrogen the electrons are away from the hydrogen atom so what happens it acquires a partial positive charge but partial positive charge in comparison to what in comparison to the hydrogen atom and the same is the case here here the hydrogen the bonding electrons are very much near fluorine and so it acquires a partial positive charge again uh, and the fluorine acquire a negative charge the fluorine acquired this negative charge relatively or relative to the fluorine molecule in which the bonding electron are equidistant so uh, hydrogen requires the partial positive charge relative uh, because uh, in hydrogen molecule uh, relative to the hydrogen atom in a hydrogen molecule because they have e their electrons are in equidistance so we can just build up our concept that uh, let uh, we can just say that this hydrogen of hf is 
more partially positive and this fluorine is more partially negative this fluorine is more partially negative than this fluorine and this is more partially positive than this but again if you look at this HPR if you compare those two molecules the electron are not very much near to the bromine so I write it a little bit less uh, partially negative and a sm uh, or small positive I have just met and I have exaggerated this positive charge or just extended it it is a big partial positive it is a small uh, big partial negative it is a uh, small partial negative it's a smaller uh, uh, partial positive charge so electronegativity uh, again make the molecule a little bit polar okay uh, or uh, from polar I mean it creates a sort of two poles suppose this is a negative pole and this is a positive pole in this molecule so look at these three molecules this is ethane this is ethene and this is ethine or a single bond a double bond it is a double bond between carbon carbon double bond and or this triple bond or you can say this is sp3 or sp cubed carbon this is sp2 carbon and this is sp carbon so why I have why I have written those here just to, to understand the electronegativity a little bit more or uh, some other molecules uh, mm, uh, by taking these molecules as an example you will understand the electronegativity a little bit more this is sp3 carbon this is sp2 carbon and this is sp carbon and this is ch bond the bond is formed between sp2 carbon and hydrogen uh, sorry sp3 carbon and with hydrogen this bond is formed this suppose uh, this this bond is formed or these two bonds are formed by uh, between sp2 hybridized carbon and hydrogen this ch bond is formed bet bet uh, between uh, sp carbon and hydrogen atom so why I am writing those things it will be clear in a moment as you know that in sp3 carbon the s character is less how because there is one s and three p's so uh, you you can say that 25 percent of s character is present in this ch bond because this is sp3 hybridized here in this ch bond or this ch bond the s uh, the s character is 30 about 33 percent more than 25 percent and in this ch bond the sp character is almost 50 percent because s1 s and 1 p okay so the more the s character uh, uh, you the more the atom wants electron towards itself okay or let, let me put it in another word as the s character increases the carbon becomes a sort of more electro negative you can say sort of more electronegative suppose we write the bonding electrons here right in between now just because of the s character the electrons are a little bit more near to this carbon and in this case they are even more near to this carbon okay the electron in reality electrons in the reality are not as near as this but I am just showing you the comparison okay because as you saw that I have written those uh, electrons uh, very near to the carbon and as you saw that in fluorine also they I wrote them very near to the fluorine atom but this carbon is definitely not as electronegative as fluorine but I am writing these a little bit nearer to the carbon just to make the comparison between them and to make you understand that this carbon is a little bit more electronegative or just because of it's more s character in the bond because it is using more s character so it attracts the bonding electron more towards itself so the uh, this electrons wants electron a little bit less than this carbon and this carbon uh, want uh, the bonding electron a little bit less than this or you can say then this electron this carbon wants the bonding electron the more so what will happen this hydrogen will acquire a little bit 
positive charge partial positive charge and this is partial negative okay I think that this ink is not visible so I should write with a blue marker this with partial positive and this carbon with partial negative this with partial positive and this with partial negative this is more part uh, now I'm again exaggerating the things or I'm intentionally making this partial positive more partial positive because this carbon is considered a little bit more electronegative or in fact the SP in SP bond the carbon has more power to attract the bonding electrons towards itself so this is more partially positive less partially positive and least partially positive so if you have any bass and you uh, suppose from bass I mean uh, you have strong bass you will understand what strong bases are but right now you have some strong bass but it is one atom one strong bass and you place all of the, those things uh, in some flask or beaker some are gases again but you just uh, make the contact of these all with it with the base so what will happen it will only it will uh, abstract the hydrogen very easily from this one and a little bit difficultly from this one and very with very difficulty from this one or again if you have a strong base and you want to react these three molecules and you have just captured those three molecules somehow and you have a bass present so and you just throw the bass and the bass will not say anything to this anything to those and it will only abstract this one very much fastly okay or, and it will uh, create this into a carb carbonine or you will uh, we'll be discussing those things uh, in other lectures but our main focus is to understand that how those things reacts and these are the parts which will help us to understand the resonance and the resonance is a phenomenon which will make us understand that why those molecules for which we cannot draw more uh, a single Lewis structure how they behave how they react uh, chemically and how they are different from the other molecules okay so let's move to another uh, topic which we already discussed a little bit it's called as the inductive effect so this in uh, when we look to this carbon in cl as we know that this is more electronegative so electrons will be more near to itself now this carbon has two electronegative groups so the electron the electrons are almost near the cl uh, the electronegative atoms but now two electrons two atoms are attracting the electrons from the, the bonding electron from this carbon and now here in this case three chlorine molecule these are cl cl and cl they are attracting electrons from this poor carbon so what will happen Th this unequal sharing of electrons as you saw in the electronegative section they can be transmitted through the whole chain or you can say that it can affect uh, several up to several bonds in such a way that suppose the, in this molecule as we saw that this carbon will be partially positive but as you see that when this thing become partially positive so again it become a little bit we can say a little bit more electronegative how uh, you will learn it's, it's not uh, the, that case but you just consider it a little bit more electronegative in a sense that now this is partially positive and it would like to uh, uh, now it will like to attract electron toward itself so it will uh, attract the electron from this bond a very very little it will not be exactly in the middle but let's say um, about uh, put uh, about uh, 50 per 60 percent near to this or 55 percent near to this carbon 
and uh, so you can say if this distance is 100 so it will be more a little bit more near to this carbon not very much okay not very much so it will make it a little bit partial positive but not as much as the this carbon because it will attract from this carbon atom this bond to uh, decrease its positiveness now here two are attached so it will be very much partially positive and it will in turn attract the electrons or uh, between those two uh, the bond between those two carbon toward itself but a little bit more than this one so it will also acquire a little bit partial positive charge a little bit more than this one because now there are two groups this is more positive because two things are attracting electrons from it and this carbon it is very much positive I am again exaggerating and writing it a big and it's a little bit big too not as big as this one so this effect it can uh, also affect the other bonds up to two or three bonds okay from two or three bonds i mean that this 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 is a this is one bond and this, uh, there are other things too present let's suppose this is ch2 again as you know that there is another bond between ch it will again effect be affected a little bit and i will drive it a small partial positive these two ch2s are again affected so if this carbon is affected it will in turn attract a little bit from these edges but with the as the uh, chain length is increased the uh, uh, attraction of electron uh, or the pull of the electron will also become smaller this will attract the electrons a little bit more towards itself suppose this is attracting 100 percent suppose sorry if, uh, 70 percent this will attract about uh, two to three percent from the middle not that much okay and these three will attract the electro those elect the those electron a little bit more to this carbon so what is the conclusion the conclusion is that that this carbon will be partial positive it will make this carbon a little bit partial positive and very little this hydrogen because this is the third bond this is first this is second this is the third bond this there are two things now it will make this carbon very partial positive and it will make it a little bit moderately partial positive and that will in turn attract the electrons from this uh, hydrogen and will make them partial positive more than this and again in this case three things are attracting so this will be very much partial positive this will be again very partial positive and the hydrogens will be again partially positive so we will study those things in acid bases that how they are useful there but now our aim is to understand that what this thing how uh, what is resonance uh, and to understand resonance and understand the meaning of the resonance that what the uh, resonance tells us that how those molecules reacts